This is the Wizard WZRD Chicago 88.3 FM. We have with us today at Wizard Tonika Lewis Johnston, the creator and uh, founder and uh, just a workaholic for the Photip Map Project. Welcome, Tonika. How are you today? I'm good, thank you. Well, first of all, describe to our listeners uh, what uh, the photo map project is all about, when you started it, all the nice details. Um, a photo map project is an art project, essentially, um, but it is using Chicago's grid map and identifying mirroring points on the map to reveal the inequity and the segregation that exists in Chicago, while also bringing residents together for a conversation. So an example would be um, 6720 South Ashland and 6720 North Ashland. I photograph those addresses that are similar on the same street but different sides of town and, you know, have them, have people be able to compare how they look. Um, and then also for residents who live on those same streets to come together and I take their portrait and document them meeting each other and having a conversation about how they came to live in their neighborhood. So it really is a multimedia art project. Do you know if uh, any of those neighbors became friends and then uh, stayed in contact with each other? Yes, most of them. Um, it was a total of 12 people that made up four pairs um, of Matt twins. Mm -hmm. and. All of them have remained in contact. I believe it's actually one map pair that didn't stay in contact as much, but the rest of them did. As a matter of fact, they all took me out for my birthday last year, uh -huh. and that was more than a year after the project was started. So, yes, they definitely are all Facebook friends, keep in touch on social media, and um, a few of them actually continue to see each other afterwards. Do you know if the project opened any doors to uh, closer relations between the communities? Did any other organizations become involved? Um, I wouldn't say that it contributed to um, whole neighborhoods <laughs> mm -hmm. coming together. Uh, I would say that the response to the project and the coverage of the project really help expand the conversation about segregation and its role, its present day role in um, impacting our social networks, how it really does, you know, force us to kind of remain in silos and not interact and really challenging people to think about if that's really what we want today. And so it definitely has become a large citywide conversation and Folded Map has been referenced and used as a tool to kind of show that this segregation does exist and residents do want to interact and kind of putting a call to our elected officials as to, you know, this has to stop. So it definitely has been used as a tool to kind of push the conversation forward. I don't necessarily think it's <laughs> brought neighborhoods together, though. You, you know that our new mayor, uh, Mayor Lightfoot, uh, has wanted to end. She still wants to end automatic prerogative. And uh, the main result of automatic prerogative, it seems, is to keep neighborhoods segregated. So do you think maybe you could consider testifying at the city council about, uh, about how neighborhoods might be better if they were not so segregated and that people might be able to come together and uh, do uh, do both communities good. Yeah, um, I've thought about that and I know the automatic prerogative um, is one of the reasons and barriers. Um, however, since we have so many new aldermen, mm -hmm. you know, um, aldermen of color uh, now, I would really kind of not hate to see their 
the potential power that they would have had kind of removed. And, and, and I would love for it to move into a conversation of the barriers that aldermen actually have to instituting some of the um, resources and funding that they would like to have in their community. So I think automatic prerogative historically was the primary issue because it was a way for specific aldermen who wanted segregation. It was a tool for them to use to kind of sustain the segregation that exists. But now, you know, that the faces of, of our Chicago aldermen are starting to change, then I would I would love for the conversation to be about what they need to institute some of the um, things that they would like to do. And, and I think that has to go alongside with discussing what all dramatic prerogatives should remain and what should go away, you know, because aldermen do have specific barriers, you mm -hmm. know, specifically in Inglewood, we have six all dramatic wards and, you know, Inglewood is such a small part of all of their wards that, you know, I do know that they face challenges with with how to redirect funding into Inglewood because that specific group of aldermen have to uh, have a conversation together and then also have money put into Inglewood. And that's something unique and that's something very different that a lot of other aldermen don't have to consider. So that's a challenge for them as well. And, and I am aware of that. So I would like all of those conversations to kind of happen at once. But I definitely wouldn't mind testifying. Yes. In other words, uh, you're very hopeful that uh, aldermanic prerogative will be put to better use. Yes. Yes. Definitely put to better use and... Um, you know, figure out which restrictions are necessary to mm -hmm. kind of be removed. Mm -hmm. What inspired you to uh, do the photo map project, and uh, uh, what inspired you to the name? Uh, well, first of all, I'll just go with the name. The name of the project um, came about towards the end of me completing the project because I never had a name since I had started working on it um, in about 2017. Mm -hmm. And every time I explained it, I was always saying the word, word map and then I was always saying folding. And, and then eventually uh, a friend of mine who's an artist, you know, after hearing me say that so much, you know, she was just like, you know, you have your folded map project, you know. And I was like, oh, that's the name. Folded map, because I was always saying, you know, like if you folded the map, but I never like intentionally said folded map. But when she just referred to it as, you know, your folded map project, I was like, oh, that's that's exactly the name. Um, but the motivation behind it really came from a few different places. You know, I like to explain to people that it really is kind of like my own personal biography in form of an art project. Um, so it really wasn't me studying Chicago's mapping, um, urban landscape, or Chicago segregation. It was really me reflecting on my own life experience and then connecting that to all of these other systemic issues. And so I was really just walking people through um, the different phases of my life where I realized how segregation looks and how it's different, um, how the north side is different from my home neighborhood, Inglewood, and how I discovered it. And then also the Map Twins actually meeting kind of reflects my experience in high school where that's actually how I got to learn about a lot of Chicago neighborhoods was through my friendships. You know, I went to Lane Tech High School and met a lot of kids from all over Chicago who were from different neighborhoods and we got to know each other and each other's neighborhoods through our friendships. So that is the element that I applied to Folded Map. That really was kind of the 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 gold of the project, if you will. Um, but really it just came out of my daily commute from um, Inglewood to Lane Tech every day, um, you know, being on Was a... that 
Was that part of a school project, or you just no. happened to travel that way? Yeah, that was my daily commute, because okay. I went to Lane Tech, and oh. so I had to make that commute every day. And so when you're on the red line train, and then you have to take the bus to the mm. red line train, um, you just look out the window. This is in the 90s. I had my Walkman on. I was listening to music, looking out the window, and I just noticed the landscape change. Mm -hmm. And I also noticed that the streets were the same. And so that just always stuck with me. And it was pretty much in the back of my mind until I became an adult and started doing community work. But at that time, when I was taking the train to school in high school, um, those observations motivated the question of, of why. Why does my neighborhood look like this and not the neighborhood that Lane Tech exists in? And so those observations made me want to pursue the answers to, to why. And although it took me becoming an adult and doing community work to really make the connection, that question put me on a path to um, always being interested in stuff that related to uh, me discovering these different answers, which ultimately came to segregation. Did you start the folding map project from scratch or was it uh, as a result of something else? Oh no, it was completely from scratch. In 2016, um, when I was actually working at Growing Home, which is a, another wonderful organization in Inglewood that has an employment training program as well as the Urban Farm, mm -hmm. I was working there and I was still doing community work and I was, you know, photographing Inglewood and it was after the presidential election year that I believe frustrated everybody. And it was at that time while I was working there that I was like, you know what, I really should start working on my concept of this project of, of comparing the same streets in Chicago but that exist on the north and south side. So I really just started working on it um, from scratch in 2016. What kind of community work were you doing at the time? Um, I am one of the 11 co-founders of Resident Association of Greater Inglewood. And so I would, you know, volunteer with events that they put on. One is the Inglewood Village Meeting, where we um, bring the community together to learn about just a variety of programs and services that are relevant to Inglewood. Um, that people pretty much wouldn't get otherwise. And also this event that we do in the summertime called So Fresh Saturdays, um, but mostly, you know, just documenting, photographing events that Resident Association of Greater Inglewood did. And that's how I met a lot of other residents who were concerned residents in Inglewood. And so I was doing a lot of, a lot of that. Were the residents involved in any voter registration drives? Oh, yes. As a matter of fact, um, RAGE, which is the, you know, acronym for Resident Association of Greater Inglewood, mm -hmm. they were one of the first organizations to initiate um, an Inglewood Votes campaign mm -hmm. years ago, um, where they, you know, registered voters all throughout Inglewood, and they were very successful. So, yeah, RAGE definitely has been involved in, um, you know, civic engagement and really getting people in the community to become active registered voters. When you were working on the project, did you encounter any uh, potential uh, subjects who did not want to meet their map twin? Yes. Well, I didn't encounter them. They just didn't respond to my solicitation. Mm -hmm. So um, in order for me to get the north side map twins, because since I live in Inglewood and I'm from Inglewood, I was able to quickly find people on the specific blocks in Inglewood that I wanted to um, focus on. Mm -hmm. um, but doing that on the north side was a challenge because I would have to go on the north side on the weekends or after work to um, like ask people if they wanted to be involved on specific blocks and that really wasn't working because I wasn't able to go on the north side as frequently as I needed mm -hmm. to find people who would participate. So I created a solicitation packet that Loyola University actually helped me um, deploy onto the blocks that I wanted to target. And so everyone who was involved in the project was pretty much um, responding to that letter. 
they self-selected themselves. So I had about 30 packages um, that we had sent to these different houses. Um, and I would say about eight homes responded. Mm -hmm. So eight out of 30, I, you know, <laughs> but I don't know if those individuals um, later signed on to Folded Maps contact form, form mm -hmm. um, because that is a large number of people on the contact form who are really interested. So okay. I really don't have any way of knowing unless I go through the contact list if those individuals later became interested in just the project and not being a participant. But I definitely sent out about 30 letters and, and about eight people, eight homes responded. So if uh, some residents want to become participants, is there still, is the opportunity still open now or is there? Yeah, um, you know, because I can't say where the future of Folded Map is going outside of my next iteration, which is focusing on the Northwest neighborhoods and West Side neighborhoods, mm -hmm. um, I definitely would love for people to still, you know, sign up to get updates or be involved or be potential Map Twins um, because there's a possibility that it could become a docu series. I'm really interested in pursuing that. So they could always go to www.foldedmapproject.com and click on the tab that says contact and it should be a folded map contact form that they could fill out. Or they could just email me directly and I can send them the form. And my email is pretty much all online, but it's tonika.johnson at gmail.com. Is um the Let's put it this way, if uh, people want to participate and uh, speak with their MAP Twin, are they able to contact their MAP Twin through the project? Um, well, they can do that on their own, okay. you know, and then I they see. can let me know how that went, mm -hmm. but the process through uh, the way in which I do Folded Map is that it's documented the first, um, we filmed the map twins meeting for the first time mm -hmm. so that's a critical part so you would kind of ruin the <laughs> the right. element of surprise um, by going to seek out your own map twin and then wanting to be involved in the project but if you google it you know that's definitely helping the research but definitely not meeting your map twin and then mm -hmm. wanting to be a part of it mm -hmm. but for individuals um, who want to engage in the project, I think that's a great way to extend the reach of, of how people can um, be a part of Folded Map without necessarily me being involved with filming them. They could definitely, you know, contact their map twin themselves and kind of send me photos or updates because I would love to, to get that kind of engagement with the project because that could be a whole other thing, like a little hashtag. Uh, folded, folded map. I don't know extension or or something like that. But where they could just let me know how they've kind of used the concept of folded map to to meet someone else, and then just update me because I would love to share that. Is your iteration with Northwest Side neighborhoods uh, and West Side neighborhoods is that a different project from the folded map project, or yeah, it's just an extension of folded map because the. The project as it stands now only has addresses from the north and south side. And so I really didn't feel like Folded Map was a complete project since it doesn't include right. the western side of Chicago because their segregation looks a bit different. It's actually more stark because those neighborhoods um, are still very segregated. However, they're just three to four miles apart. It's actually more condensed. So it's still a north-south divide on the western side of the city, um, but it's less distance between mm -hmm. them. And so I really wanted to make sure that that was included in the overall project. Okay. Have you worked with any legislators to address possible solutions for 
racial and institutional conditions that separate the Chicago North from the Chicago South? Oh, no, I haven't worked with any legislators, but I'm very confident with all the wonderful people that I know who work for a variety of amazing organizations that have um, expertise in, in policy and research and equity. Um, I definitely entrust all of them to be able to, um, you know, speak on that behalf of the of the residents of the city and serve as a voice for the many residents who want to kind of eliminate segregation and provide um, opportunities for integration and equity to occur with housing, um, crime, education, um, business development, entrepreneurs, small local businesses having opportunities to start um, uh, opening stores in divested communities. So I'm kind of leaving it up to those wonderful people to push that forward. But definitely, um, they're able to use Folded Map as a tool to express their their um, interest in in having equity all over the city. Do you have the names of some organizations that our listeners could uh, go to because they might be inspired to uh, lobby on uh, behalf of this uh, issue? Yeah, um, I definitely know a lot of those individuals who work for the organization I'm going to tell you are on um, our mayor's transition team, um, one being Metropolitan Planning Council, um, and then an organization called QCUE, um, and then also, I would say for media-based, because there has to be equity in our media landscape, because that definitely contributes to how people perceive Chicago. Um, that organization is City Bureau. Uh, they have an amazing civic engagement program, um, and they do some um, wonderful coverage of hyper-local um, stories. So those would be the, the, the main ones just off top that I would say mm -hmm. people can just get familiar with to, to learn about. Um, yeah. What frustrated you the most in your work for the photo map project, and how did you overcome that issue? Um, nothing was really frustrating. I would say the most challenging part was um, I'm a photographer, so this project is multimedia, and it really forced me out of my comfort zone. Um, as a photographer, me transitioning into video wasn't that difficult because, you know, I find that fascinating as well. But to learn audio, I was very resistant. And if I did not have the encouragement from uh, the City Bureau staff to learn the audio equipment, to document the conversations with the residents that I was having, um, the project probably wouldn't have included Map Twins because that part was really frustrating with for me. I wanted to just only photograph the addresses, photograph residents. I didn't even want to talk to them a lot and definitely have them meeting each other. I was like, I'm going to have to facilitate the meeting and do the scheduling. So um, that was a challenge, um, not necessarily completely frustrating. It just it just it just made me have to grow as an artist and learn new skill sets that I definitely wasn't planning on using for this project. But the beauty of, you know, kind of leaning into being uncomfortable so that you can learn <clears throat> new skills was very valuable. Mm -hmm. So yeah, so you, uh, at first it was a challenge, but then you mastered it and uh, you have oh, so I many. I mastered it. I got, you know, I was <laughs> able to do it enough so that I could have a decent project, but no, I have not mastered it. As a matter of fact, I'm seeking to now take some video production classes so mm. I can learn programs that allow me to, you know, edit video better. So, well, there, uh, there's a very Good program at Northeastern Illinois University over here. The that's too far for me. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that was such a long commute. Yeah. <laughs> I would love to though. Did you get any grants or a fundraise for the Folded Map project? Yeah. So actually, towards um, 
when the project was pretty much done, I did receive a contribution from the Chicago Community Trust um, to help me uh, with the funding of equipment that I needed to do more map twins as well as the website um, and then I had a Kickstarter campaign that a lot of people helped and supported because the Kickstarter campaign was for me to create a website and to um, get equipment for me to use because I started doing the project with the organization City Bureau so I was using a lot of their audio equipment and and a friend of mine was donating her videography services and I just primarily took the photographs so I really did not have equipment you know audio equipment and video equipment because um, the camera I was using didn't have video so those uh, the Kickstarter campaign and the contribution from Chicago Community Trust really helped me in being able to acquire the equipment that I needed and to create the website. Um, I knew that the website was important, especially after the exhibition closed, and I realized, oh my gosh, you know, like, my project doesn't exist anywhere if it doesn't have an exhibit, and I did not want that to be the case. I wanted people to be able to continue to access it, learn about it, use it as a tool, be able to contact me, so I, I knew I had to create a website. So um, those two contributions really helped me create a website so that's the only funding that I pretty much received. So the Chicago Community Trust approached you or did you apply for a grant from them? No they approached me um, as an artist because Spoden Map isn't a 501c3. Oh I did receive another um, another grant from the Oppenheimer Foundation um, and that grant really helped me um, make connections and, and be able to free up some of my time so I can create a broader engagement around Folded Map, like the play that it turned into. And so that was uh, the support from the Oppenheimer Foundation definitely helped me be able to do that. Um, but yeah, Folded Map as of right now is not a 501c3, so um, I have not been applying for grants through mm -hmm folded map as a formal entity, but I am in the process of making folded map a nonprofit organization mm -hmm. so that I can continue to create the um, the products that will help people engage in this larger issue, you know, like a toolkit, um, a community curriculum, um, and so forth. So. Yes, I definitely would love more financial support to do this because <laughs> it's definitely difficult trying to juggle it all. But those are the three um, primary contributions that I received. What advice do you have for students to engage civically towards solutions for societal ills as uh, you have done in the Folded Map Project? Um, I would say since a lot of our present day issues come from um, a history of not only racism, but then um, evolved into just sy systemic discrimination. I say that the best way for students to begin getting involved with trying to um, do work addressing these issues is to start, start local, start in your community. There is value in getting to know your community and using your experience in your community as expertise to figure out how to improve your neighborhood and make it what you want it to be. And then once you start getting to know your neighborhood, then you can broaden, broaden um, your reach and go beyond your neighborhood. But I think definitely localizing your your focus and your work and your intention um, is definitely useful and helpful you know and I think it's really good to be able to do that before you go to other neighborhoods uh, trying to help them do whatever it is that they want to do you know start commit to your neighborhood you know commit to your neighborhood um, and then you can make relationships and, and allies based off of 
what you've learned about your neighborhood needing and about um, what you've learned your neighborhood has done great in an effort to solve or address some of its issues because those are things that you can actually share with other neighborhoods but you have to commit you have to commit to um, your neighborhood you have to if this is something that you're interested in that sounds like advice drawn straight from your experience. Yeah, definitely. You know, you can't you can't tackle systemic change without first addressing where you live and committing to where you live or where you go to school or you know, if you're lucky enough to have a job that directly deals with these issues. But you definitely have to make a commitment in one of those areas. And for students, I would say your neighborhood. When can the community see the next steps of uh, the fruits of your next iteration for the yeah. North Side and West Side for the Golden Map Project? So, um, I am actually in talks now with Gallery 400 uh, at UIC about a potential exhibition next year. But prior to that, I am partnering with a wonderful project called We Women, where they are um, inviting visual artists, photographers who have projects that utilize community engagement and for them to share it with the community and they provide funding to help them do so. So as a result of me being part of that project, I plan to use the support and funding from that project to do a public large-scale projection of the MAP Twin meetings of the Northwest and West Side neighbors for the public to be able to see. Um, so that way it doesn't have to rely on waiting for an exhibition next year. I'll be able to do that um, either later this year or or the earlier part of next year. But I'm definitely going to use that project as a way to not only engage more MAP twins, but to show um, the Inglewood community and people who want to come to Inglewood to, to watch the next MAP twin meeting. Well, mm -hmm. Yes. Well, thank you so much, Tonika, for joining us on WCRD today. Again, this. Uh, this was uh, Tonika Lewis Johnston of the Folded Map Project and uh, talking about her work and the next steps. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you.